so I really like my car. And I've had this thing for 16 years. I was even so lucky recently to get those spinner wheel covers that I always wanted. I don't need no introduction. Drive business around the city on buttons. Arm hanging, wrist hanging, just stunting. Drop the top block. But the problem is with my car is that it is getting a little long in the tooth. At about 160,000 miles, things are sort of starting to break. I did break down for the first time because of this stupid $20 part that ended up costing me almost $1,000 to just to figure it out. I'm pretty sure that it was this camshaft position sensor that cracked, and as soon as that was kaput, the whole car just shut down right there on the freeway. So even though I got my car fixed, and this will probably last another 100,000 miles or another 10 years, who knows, I was thinking that maybe it's time to get a new car. And the car that has drawn a lot of excitement was the Ford Bronco. So I went to Google and typed in new Ford Bronco to see what was going on, what they had to offer. And you can see I've been looking at the, uh, the new Bronco here. I think it's a really cool car and I can't wait till it uh, finally hits the road and I can go t take a look at it in person. But then as I'm looking at this new Bronco, which I think is pretty cool, I began to think about, you know, what other vehicles would I consider? And I remember watching that Tesla Cybertruck reveal. I thought the car was really cool. Um, whether or not the glass got smashed or the door may have got dented in or not, who knows. But I thought it was definitely a good introduction to a car or a truck by Tesla because they actually had one. It actually drove up on stage all lit up and a bunch of people got out of the car. I thought it was really cool. But I also want to look at other electric vehicles and see what's out there as by the time I get a new vehicle, maybe all these will be out and I can actually pick up an electric car. So then I come across this Toyota Tacoma looking thing called the Nikola Badger. And I'm thinking that's a pretty cool looking truck. You know, where can I get this thing? I've never heard of this company. Even looking at the headline of the YouTube video, it said, 2022 Nikola Badger claims 600 miles of range and 8,000 pounds of towing. I was thinking, perfect, where can I get one? But then, immediately popping up in YouTube are a ton of these videos such as this one that says, why Nikola Motor Company will fail, or Nikola Motors doomed to fail, what you need to know about Nikola Motors stock. There's this guy from Solving the Money Problem. And he pretty much ripped on Nikola for you know, maybe a good 10 or 15 minutes. The video turned out to be pretty good. And I ended up watching several more of these videos by Solving the Money Problem. But as it turns out, the host of Solving the Money Problem is really a big fan of Tesla. And... It's probably because Tesla's a pretty awesome company, or no doubt about it, and probably more so that the host owns some Tesla stock and thinks that Tesla will continue to go up in value. And then just a couple days ago, he put out a video that was kind of dissecting what a Tesla bear was saying and ripping his theory completely apart. Tesla's stock has certainly had an amazing run. Just looking at the one-year chart, you're around $200 uh, from about a year ago in August till, uh, to about just $1,600 um, today, which gives you about 800% or so return in just one year. So that puts Tesla at a market cap of $307 billion with a 52-week earnings per share of... $1.92. It's certainly up to the people buying the stock in a company to do their research and to come up with a price point in the future in order to make a solid investment and get return for their money. So when a company goes from a street value of $40 billion to $300 billion in the span of a year, 
I can definitely see how people are scratching their heads. Looking at other companies such as Google, you can see that their stock growth is much more muted. Yes, it's anywhere between 10, 20, maybe even 30% a year sometimes, but certainly not the 800% rise that Tesla's experienced. On the balance sheet side, I really do like Tesla. Uh, Tesla doesn't have a lot of debt. It doesn't have a lot of intangible assets. They do have uh, increasing sales year over year by over a billion dollars. Um, are they an energy company? Eh. They're actually down on their uh, energy generation, but uh, it's possible. Yeah, for what they're doing, I think that Tesla's uh, doing a great job. You know, the question is, is whether or not they're worth, you know, three hundred billion dollars, or as some people think, you know, seven thousand dollars a share. That would put them up at uh, over, I'll put them up way over a trillion dollars. Is this a trillion dollar company? You guys tell me. And going back to Tesla's tenure chart, you can see where they're where they promised 500,000 cars a year production. And that was back in, I think, 2014, 13, around that area. Just like around in here, and, you know, you had a share price of about $200. And then to get close to that production uh, number, it's basically around today. So it took them. I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years or nearly seven years to get the half a million cars. So what sort of production would you need to make this, you know, a trillion dollar company? I mean, maybe that half a million cars per year would only give you a share price of uh, $200. And once again, that would place your you know, market cap around, I don't know, 30, 40 billion dollars. So you have a 40 billion dollar company right now that's actually been bid up to 300 billion dollars. So at 300 billion dollars for this company, I think you would have to have the Cybertruck up and running. You'd have to have that solar uh, panel up and running and you would have to have the sexy line uh, up and running. Now, it could help cement the $300 billion valuation. Could be the Tesla Semi. And this market could be absolutely huge and a game changer for the value of Tesla. But even that being said, does that put this automaker above a $300 billion valuation? Do you guys think it's fair to uh, say that shorts are stupid when it comes to this $1,600 Tesla stock? Or should we get out our short shorts? You know, what should it be, folks? Should it be the Cybertruck or the Ford Bronco? You guys tell me, and we'll catch you next time.